Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So I've done a couple videos surrounding this topic on more niche topics. So today's video is going to be kind of a general video all about the alcohol and bar catering for your wedding. to stocking your bar and having a bar at your wedding, there are a lot of different routes to go and a lot of different things to consider in order to determine which route is the best for you. So, so in the planning process, the first thing that you should be doing is thinking about your budget for alcohol. This is one of those things that can add up so, so quickly. And there's a lot of ways you can cut back on your alcohol budget. And it's just important to know where those costs are going to be associated and how you can structure your bar that's going to fit the budget that's right for you. So you wanna make sure that you're sitting down and actually calculating out what a realistic budget is for your overall alcohol. And that is alcohol itself, but also any labor costs that are going to be associated with the alcohol. Obviously your guest count is going to be the largest factor in what your overall alcohol and bar tab and cost is going to be. So keep that in mind when you are drafting your guest list and when you're coming up with this budget. And then again, obviously the, the more options that you have and the more alcohol that you have, the higher your bill is going to be for alcohol. So if you have a very large guest count, even having a pretty basic bar is going to add up very quickly. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking through this step. Number two, talk about your desires. So you and your partner should talk about what you want to have at your bar, what you two enjoy yourselves personally, and what you anticipate your guests are going to enjoy the most and what makes sense for your overall group as a whole. So are you a group that having just beer and wine is going to suffice? And that's more than enough for what you need at your bar. It's also the most cost effective option for your bar. Or maybe you want just beer and wine and one alcohol or one liquor option. So you have a signature cocktail or maybe two signature cocktails. What do you envision for your bar and what you guys want to have at your wedding as well as what you anticipate your guests want to have. So whether that's just a short, small amount of alcohol and maybe a signature cocktail, having champagne, is that something you want to have available? Do you want a full bar? Do you want a partially full bar? Do you plan to have a cash bar or a hosted bar? So if you are paying for all the alcohol yourself, then that means that your guests will not be paying for their individual drinks and will likely just be tipping the bartenders or you can have a cash bar, which is every guest will pay for their own drinks, just like they would if they were at another bar or establishment, or sometimes couples will choose to have an open bar up to a point. So whether that point is a certain time of the night or a certain dollar amount of the night, you are paying up to a certain point. And then once you reach that limit, whether it's a time limit like 10 PM or a dollar amount, like we're paying for $3,000 worth after that, you're on your own, then guests would pay for their own drinks after that point. So those are kind of your, your levels of options when it comes to that. Diving a little bit deeper, number three is to understand what your options are when it comes to alcohol catering. So you basically have like three different options, technically I guess four options when it comes to alcohol catering and how the alcohol, alcohol is actually going to get to your venue and be served at your venue. So the first option is through the venue. So if you are getting married at a um, venue that has a restaurant attached or a bar attached where they are supplying all of the alcohol, then everything goes through your venue and likely you are not allowed to bring in any outside alcohol. So you wouldn't be able to bring in any of your own alcohol. For example, here, I know there's some people that want to bring in outside alcohol from states like Washington, where you can purchase liquor at Costco for a lot cheaper than you can in a state like Montana. However, the only way you're able to do that is if you are having an alcohol caterer that is not providing all of the alcohol themselves. Most places, because of the liquor license, if they are supplying the alcohol and serving the alcohol, they will require you to have all of the alcohol that will be present at the wedding and serve served by these bartenders purchased through those bartenders. So keep that in mind. Um, but going back to hosted by the venue, this means that if you are getting ready on site, if you're going to be there all day, you will have to have all of your alcohol purchased through the venue. So make sure that you are thinking through that when it comes to your overall alcohol budget for the day, um, because anything you want to have while you're getting ready, like mimosas or anything like that, you will not be able to bring in your own and that will have to be added to your bar tab for the actual wedding alcohol catering. The other option is to actually hire an outside caterer where they would come in and bring the alcohol as well as bartenders and serve at your wedding. Another note too is make sure that you are understanding the requirements from your venue when it comes to liquor licensing and what they require for alcohol. Some venues if they don't provide the alcohol themselves, will still require a licensed bartending 
catering company to be supplying the alcohol and serving the alcohol. Some venues you can get away with purchasing your own alcohol and then just hiring, having a couple of friends serve it or have it self-serve. So make sure you're understanding those restrictions and requirements for your venue before moving any further into this step. So with an alcohol caterer, you would purchase all the alcohol through them, they would bring it on site and they would be the ones serving it. And so typically with an alcohol caterer like this, um, you have different levels of service. So a lot of times they will have packages. So either you will have, it starts at beer and wine and then you'll just have beer and wine supplied. Um, you can have beer and wine and a signature cocktail or two or have a full stocked bar. So usually there's different levels and tiers of what package you can purchase through the alcohol cater and that will determine the types of liquor that they're bringing. So if you're doing a more full bar where you are gonna have multiple liquor types, not just your signature cocktail being the only liquor option, um, there's different levels. So you'll have kind of a, a top shelf, a house package and those types of levels when it comes to the actual liquor that will be supplied. And that obviously will determine your price range for each of those packages as well. What's nice about having an alcohol cater is they will assist you a ton in knowing the quantities for your guest count of each type of alcohol to have and how much you're going to need to last the night based on your guest count. And they have the knowledge and the experience to be able to assist you with this quite a bit. So it's nice to have that as well as they are going to likely be supplying everything that you're going to need for your bar. So, you know, wine and beer openers, coolers for storage, um, buckets for storage, ice, scoopers, everything that you're going to need at the bar will be supplied by the bartending catering company. Another option is kind of a step below this where you have a professional bartending service. However, you don't purchase the alcohol through them directly. They will assist you in purchasing the alcohol third party and again, can kind of guide you and give some expertise on the quantities and what type to have, but the alcohol is not in their possession. You are not purchasing it from them. So you technically are purchasing the alcohol and you own the alcohol at the end of the night if there is anything left over, but the bartenders are in charge of it and they're in charge of stocking the bar and you'll be paying for their labor and everything else that comes with alcohol catering, just not the alcohol. That makes sense. This option is something that a lot of my couples do. You can have, you have a little bit more freedom with the pricing of your alcohol and where you are going to purchase it from, but you still have the advantage of a professional bartending service. And the last option is to completely DIY it. So you are purchasing all of the alcohol yourself. You're going somewhere like Costco, you're going to the liquor store, you're purchasing whatever you want for your bar liquor wise. And then you would have either hire some professional bartenders or have a couple of friends or have it self serve. I highly recommend do not having a bar or not having a bar completely self-serve. If you're just having kegs, you can probably get away with that. It's pretty easy to self-serve. Um, you're not gonna overdo it quite so much. When it comes to liquor, that's where it gets really tricky because people are going to be very heavy handedly pouring themselves drink and your liquor is not going to last nearly as long as if you have a professional bartender serving it. It's also a lot more difficult to anticipate the amount of alcohol you're going to need. You don't really have any guidance helping you with the alcohol calculator based on your guests and knowing how much of each type of liquor. And you're also responsible for everything that goes into your bar. So anything that you need to store um, backup alcohol in to keep it cool, refrigeration, ice, scoopers, openers, napkins, cups, everything will be on you and your responsibility to bring in. So DIYing your alcohol is probably the most cost effective option if you are really, really trying to save money. Um, however, like I said, there's just a lot more detail and things to coordinate and consider that go into it. So those are basically the things that you wanna consider when you are starting your process planning process when it comes to alcohol bar and bartending and your alcohol catering for your wedding. A couple of additional details to consider just as you're going through this process too is um, understand what your storage space is like at your venue. So is there refrigeration to keep backup drinks cool? Is there a freezer for backup ice? What is going to be the ice storage? Is there an ice machine on site? Understanding just the ice details in general is such a crucial part of bartending. And it's one of those details that tends to get overlooked. So make sure you are fully understanding not only where the ice is coming from, but the storage that you will have for it. And keep in mind that you will want ice for both keeping drinks cool, as well as ice that will go into your glass for drinking ice. Also think through when you wanna have the bar open. So do you plan to have it open prior to the ceremony when guests arrive, or will it be open after the ceremony once it's over at the start of your cocktail hour? This is usually just like an extra hour or so, but that's going to affect your overall 
uh, bar tab and the amount of money that you're going to be spending on alcohol because it's going to be a longer service amount as well as the longer labor counts and you're going to need a little bit more alcohol to account for the time prior to the ceremony. So just think through that. Another detail that I always bring up is, do you plan to have champagne? So sometimes champagne is included in one of the packages if you're doing a full catering, um, bar catering package. But is that something that you plan to have available at the bar? And are you going to have a champagne toast? So if you do plan to have a champagne toast, you're going to want a separate count of champagne for the tables that you're going to be pouring champagne at everyone's table for the toast. So that's a separate count than what you're going to have supplied at the bar. So keep that in mind if you are planning on doing a champagne toast during dinner. And finally, are shots allowed? This is something that I always encourage couples to talk about. Some bar caterers won't even allow liquor at weddings, or not liquor, but shots at weddings. Um, some couples will Sometimes they do allow it and the couple will say, don't serve anyone shots. This is just one of those things that escalates very quickly. So I encourage you to have that conversation and determine whether you want to have shots allowed at your wedding or just liquor in mixed drinks alone. So there you have it. There are some things to consider when it comes to planning the alcohol and bartending for your wedding. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. And we'll see you next week.